Welcome back to another designer profile video and in this one we're going to look at the work of Reid Duke and particularly his course Kakimbia Quafisi from the World Cup of Design a couple of years back. Now Reid doesn't tend to release a lot of courses nowadays. He used to, he's one of the very founding fathers really of TGC Design and has a load of great tutorials on his own YouTube page even if they're from a couple of games ago they're well worth watching um, and I certainly picked up loads particularly on sculpting from there. Now, he doesn't design loads, but when he does, it tends to be because he has something completely unique that he wants to showcase. In this case, he got a great idea of the African savannah and just went with that. Always produces whole designs that are unique um, and really thought-provoking and tend to work with the land and what was given. You also have to really be on your guard as the balls can bounce one way or another and tend to be the way you don't want them to. Now, with this plot, which is just stunning, environment work is obviously an absolute masterclass, all the way down to little termite mounds, as we can see there. What we're really going to look for, though, here is um, this is an absolute masterpiece of sculpting and surfacing. So we're going to look at that and particularly how naturally everything fits. The sculpting is not crazy busy there's not loads going on but it's just really smooth really well done and everything just feels like it belongs obviously planting you can pick up loads just in terms of the little items he's used the way he clumps things is something i've particularly taken from him as well as the creativity with the rock work but that's kind of specific to this course with any of his courses um be it bandit ridge old tom's ferry um Fenyard Keep, you will always see the sculpting is the thing he enjoys the most and therefore the thing that gets them is kind of the showstopper. And that's what we're really going to dig into here. So enjoy. So opening hole is a mid-length par 4 that can play really long. You start out right underneath one of these trees which he's made out of objects mashed together and as you can see the fairway tightens gradually the further you go but you want to be going further because a long approach into this perch screen that kind of funnels off in all sorts of directions is not something you want so really challenging that narrowing fairway however it's pretty easy to find the middle of the green from where you should be able to toop up but chasing pins can be bad on this and it sets the tone for the rest of the round really that seems to be my one. We're going to go with two holes tied for best par four. I actually think one comes at the second. Um, following on from that first hole where everything's tight and a little bit awkward, you get kind of the same thing on the second, but it's drivable, which tempts you to go for it. I love the tree on the left and how well that bunker sits in front of the green. And the green itself is small, it's awkwardly angled, it's awkwardly contoured, and you've got to think what shot you want to be leaving into that. Ideally a full wedge, so where do you play on the fairway? The third is another in a stretch of really strong holes, and this first par three gets the picture postcard view over Pride Rock. Now you can see the stunning rock work and the big open vista where it opens out onto the whole course after being quite hemmed in on the first few. Mounds and bunkers make you think about your approach for this one, and you don't want to be too tentative because you can get some really awkward parts on this green. It's a large green, wide variety of pin positions, very different to that previous green, which was small and Pretty, pretty narrow. Again, I have a couple of favourite par fives, and I think the par fives here are the strongest set of holes on the course. This one's a kind of semi-blind drive to the apex of that fairway before the whole dog legs round a little bit. And you can see how he's using the natural land as kind of hazards rather than just having bunkers. But when he does have bunkers, they sit in really naturally. They kind of come right out of that landscape and blend in beautifully as those little rocks. He then got these little blind bunkers, kind of an out punch bowl if you really wanted to put it as a template, but he won't have been thinking like that. Um, but you can see how if you do make that green, you've got a really good chance of making a birdie or eagle, which is nice respite after a tough first couple of hours. The second one of the par fives that I really liked was the ninth, which takes you back kind of towards the clubhouse. It's got a wide open fairway and actually you could go either left or right, Right has certainly got more central hazards. You've got a tiny little couple of tiny little bunkers emanating out from these rocky outcroppings. But you could go left, although you're leaving yourself with absolutely no angle in over those bunkers. You've then got this great rock kind of planted complex with a tree, and then the bunkers kind of hidden down behind those, and then a green that's benched into this little dune on the other side. So loads of interesting features that are working together to provide a hole that is unlike any we really ever see anywhere else. Starting out the back nine is another really strong par four, and this one again gives you a big wide open view across the savannah and the kind of non-golf course area. 
which might look kind of empty but actually really feels at home. The fairway itself is a great example of how you can basically let the golfer bite off as much as they want to chew. The further left they go, the better angle they have. The further right they go, the more they're going over those bunkers towards a green that is pretty shallow the further right you go. And whilst the contours will slow the ball up, they're not easy to manage. The finishing hole on this course is one of the best, and I think one of the best in the competition as a whole. It's a short, drivable par four with water left. Great view of the clubhouse, and there's all sorts of potentially dangerous options here. It's beautifully planted, the fairways subtly cambered towards bunker and water, and you want to be really careful of where the pin is. Never go for it, lay back, leave yourself a wedge in, um, but people will go for it chasing a score. I think it's really hard to do a good drivable par four as a finisher. This one nailed it. So leaping back into the designer, and what can you take from this course to kind of use in your own? I mean, firstly, the importance of detail work in realising an environment and the sculpting and surfacing. And sculpting and surfacing are outstanding in terms of how the texture choices really work, where he's put heavy rough, where he's put natural base terrain, how he's made that kind of this rocky sort of step look light rough and where that's used is interesting as well because it's not uniform you have it around some of the bunkers here and i think it really works you've got it over some of these bits there's some interesting creative choices that when pulled off well can be can work really nicely you've got shared bunkers which are a nice way of getting greens close together and can work if done well with lots of care you've got greens that are really close together but actually when playing the holes you may not really notice it certainly i don't think i noticed six and two were this close together when i first played them um i think it's also great for looking at the land you've got and just going with features that maybe you don't see on other golf courses but if you're good enough to make them look like they make sense they will make sense should everyone be doing rocks into bunker into shallow green absolutely not but it's a really great study as to why does this work well this works because the rocky formation all looks harmonious it makes sense it's done really well it's executed beautifully and it fits the environment and the bunker coming out of that it's not the first time he's done that you'll see it again later on in the course i think we had someone 10 down here that are really nicely done um you've got these ones down here as well the shapes are consistent but sometimes they go into this kind of scarred texture and they tend to sit down a little bit more again technically really difficult but look great when accomplished really well so if you're going to do this sort of stuff like make it fit and it's got to be done really really well and looking at these sorts of courses can kind of show you the level that we're really aiming for also, just interesting visual stuff. You don't have to bombard people with objects absolutely everywhere. If your sculpting is really good, that can be kind of a lot of the visuals you need. Let's look at 12, for example. Like, it's a really interesting tee shot with not much planting. There's negative space off to the left. We're looking dead at the horizon line, which is where he wants us to. We're looking at that fairway. You've got this little dried up valley coming down to the right that's really well executed. A couple of rocks little bits of grass popped around in interesting places and that's about it but it looks really really good because in part of what he's done with texturing where he's got light rough where he's got heavy rough things like that planting is careful but understated and the sculpting is the thing that makes everything really pop because everything just looks like it belongs and these kind of humps and hollows the fairway is not overly mounded it moves smoothly but the mounding is very much there and i think when people are trying to add undulations it's very easy to go crazy and have loads of little bobbles that play terribly, aren't very realistic. This sort of sculpting, like just go and scrutinize it. This is the sort of thing that we really all want to be aiming for. Um, and like I say, I'll link Reeb's tutorials, the ones that I used way back when, um, because I think those are invaluable in terms of developing. I mean, other things that you can take, unique hole designs for sure, and none of these are ones that you'd want to copy. Basically, he'd have made the plot and then gone on, he'd have done a lot of the environment work and the planting first and then gone and found some golf holes. He wouldn't have set out with a routing and then made the plot around it. And that, like with the RJ Wills course that we looked at, that can really prompt some unique hole designs. So definitely give that a go. Above all, like, this course is something that I will never 
be able to do. This is not my sort of type of design um, style, but it's something I very much aspire to, of like the environment looking completely immersive, all sorts of interest and creative holes. I, I will study this a ton. I suggest you do as well. Do go and play his other courses as well. They're fantastic. And yeah, give him a follow.